Welcome to the American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series. In this commemorative series, past presidents and other leaders of the American Nephrology Nurses Association will provide a rich history of the association itself and of nephrology nursing as a specialty nursing profession. The American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series is brought to you by the Nephrology Nursing Journal, the official journal of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. We are honored to present this episode, and we hope you enjoy these invaluable and enlightening nephrology nursing recollections. Hi, my name is Karen Robbins, and I'm the Associate Editor of the Nephrology Nursing Journal and a past president of ANA. It's my honor today to talk with Taryn Warren Sims, who was president of ANA from 1993 to 94. Taryn, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about ANA and nephrology nursing. Thanks for inviting me to speak about something very dear to my heart, which is the Association for Nephrology Nurses. Let's start with the beginning of your career. How did you wind up in nephrology nursing, and what was your first job as a nephrology nurse? My first job as a nephrology nurse was in Houston, Texas, at the University of Texas, chronic hemodialysis. I moved there from Birmingham, where I completed my schooling and worked in the ICU as a new graduate. They had an opening in chronic hemodialysis unit, and I was interested in something different than the ICU setting. And they also gave me the option to rotate into the acute unit, so I learned a lot about nephrology right up front in my first job. So how did you then move on into other roles specific to nephrology? I left there and went to a role at Medical Center Del Oro, a small private hospital in Houston, where I worked as the unit manager for a four-station acute hemodialysis unit with three other nurses who were very close colleagues of mine for many years and are still today. Very good. So tell me about your role as president of ANA. I know that you were the president at our 25th anniversary meeting also held in Dallas. Right. This is a pretty special year for us on our 50th when I look back on our 25th year. When I was working in nephrology in 1980, Beth Ulrich, then a board member for ANNA, came to my office and introduced me to the idea of being more involved with ANNA. At that time, we were called AANNT. The association was paired with technicians. That's exactly right. And she asked me to get involved, and she talked to me about the merits of membership as well as considering becoming a future leader in AANNT. And she convinced me to do both, and that began my career in the association. And our 25th year, we were certainly at the peak of our growth at that time and also our continued influence in the specialty of nephrology. That year, I went to the Rose Garden as soon as I became president. President of the United States, President Clinton, held a National Nurses Day in the Rose Garden, and I was fortunate enough to represent ANA there, and it was quite a start to my year. Well, that is quite a start. Wow. Tell us about some of the things that happened while you were president, some of the accomplishments. Well, as all associations do, that year I had the privilege to represent us at many organizational meetings, but there were some key things that went on both nationally and specialty-wise that were very big landmarks for our association. I was able to represent ANA at the National Nursing Summit on Healthcare Reform in 1993. It was very exciting. Ultimately, this was the first time that specialty nursing had been involved in looking at a national project such as healthcare reform. We worked very hard to try to define what nursing's role should be in trying to advise our legislators about healthcare reform. And while there was not consensus about what format that reform should take, our association did feel strongly that we should be part of the collective action. Ultimately, the nursing organizations collectively backed our nursing leader, Virginia Betts, to speak for over 2.2 million collective nurses' voices, and we were part of the conversation about the beginnings of healthcare reform. It's not as we know it today, but that was a very big moment for nursing and for specialty nursing and for ANA. We had other important representations that year. We were obviously present at many other nursing leadership forums as well as specialty leadership forums. We always had representation, but we were invited that year to be part of Healthcare Financing Administration, or HICFA, on the development of the scope of work for the ESRD networks. That was very important that we were at the table. We also were at the Institute of Medicine's meeting on measuring, managing, and improving quality in the ESRD program and the National Institutes of Health Consensus Development Conference on Morbidity, Mortality, and Dialysis. 
you could just hear by the names of these meetings how important it was that nursing and nephrology nursing be represented. And it was my privilege, along with other board members, to be present at those meetings and represent the voices of ANNA. That sounds like a pivotal time for the association or specialty, particularly in nursing in general. I know that having served on your board, I recall that you were a tremendous advocate for chapters and for chapter leadership development. I always felt that chapters were really where I came from. They were my base, period. I love the membership. I love representing the membership, and I love having the membership be involved. I'd spent two years on the chapter's membership committee before I became president, and that was a committee very dear to my heart. That year, we had more than 100 chapters. We only added one new chapter that year. However, we added tremendous educational and leadership growth opportunities for our chapter leaders. We felt given the strength of them and the growth of our association at over 9,000 members that year that we really needed to help our chapter leaders have the skills they needed to grow their own chapters. We offered for the first time something called For Leaders Only, which was a follow-up to the board's long-term strategic planning committee meeting and involved our leaders in the strategic planning of the association and helped them also see where they fit into that. It was a great year for chapters in ANNA that year. And that was ANA's first long-range strategic plan, is that correct? It was the second. The first one was from 1990, and we revised it. However, it was the first time we wrote a mission statement. A mission statement is well imprinted on my brain. I'll tell you what it said. It said, our mission is to promote the professional growth and interest of registered nurses practicing in nephrology and to uphold the highest standards of patient care. Now, obviously, our mission statement has changed in the years to come to reflect different providers and different goals. But we were so proud that we could actually formulate for the first time and articulate what our mission was. When we involved the chapter presidents in Dallas at For Leaders Only, that was the first time that chapter leaders and other regional leaders had been able to be involved in strategic planning for the association. It was a big moment. It was exciting. Since you were president, what kind of experiences have you had that were perhaps a result of your having been the president of ANA? Well, certainly the year following my presidency, as well as many years to come, I was able to maintain a lot of involvement with nephrology, nursing as a specialty as it grew forward. We continued to provide new educational offerings and think about where our role was in relationship to the physician groups that we had partnered with for so many years. We also kept reformulating our relationship with the technician group, which was reflected in the change in our name many years before I was president. It influenced my understanding truly of the range of nephrology nursing. When I finished my president year, the following year, my family moved to Virginia, and I took a new job at the University of Virginia, and I worked in solid organ transplant, a kidney transplant, for the first time in my career after many, many years with a focus on hemo and peritoneal dialysis. It was a great opportunity to see another aspect of nephrology nursing. It also really helped me understand what transferable knowledge not nephrology nurses have from the clinic setting to the home dialysis setting to the quality assurance setting all the way to the acute care setting, taking care of patients, receiving transplants. Later, my work took me to work with patients with kidney cancer, which is what I still do today, but those patients have chronic kidney disease, and I always think my background in nephrology makes me much stronger than my clinical skills taking care of patients who are facing life with a single kidney or even a part of a single kidney or even patients who may be losing a kidney due to a neoplasm or a tumor facing dialysis. Well, certainly the loss of renal function is something that's shared with patients with end-stage renal disease, with chronic kidney disease versus from a cancer, but the process of dealing with that loss is still there. It is, and it's interesting because many of the patients are surprised that I can talk to them about what it looks to be facing hemodialysis or facing a renal replacement therapy in any fashion. They're surprised that I know about it. They're surprised that I can talk to them about what it might be like to do home care or home dialysis versus going to a center location and about transplantation. Many of them are surprised that I know anything about transplantation because I work in a surgical field dealing with oncology. But they're very interrelated, and I think nephrology has a lot to do with many medical conditions, and it's great knowledge that nurses can transfer anywhere. Well, that's certainly a strong argument for those who say, well, nephrology is just about dialysis, which clearly it is not and has not been your experience. No. Looking ahead, what do you see as the future of nephrology nursing? You know, it's hard to know, but we've already gone through some major changes as a specialty. 
One of the changes that we've gone through is adding a range of providers. Look at the amount of nurse practitioners who are taking care of patients with renal disease who are prior nephrology nurses or certified nephrology nurses. Now we have a specialty certification for advanced practice nephrology nurses. I think we've just continued to grow with the field, and that's very important for our association. I know our membership numbers are, again, strong, and while we've gone through the changes that all associations have gone through in terms of financing for educational opportunities, people being able to leave their home and travel to a distant meeting, ANAs continue to find new ways to provide that through streaming. Audio conferences were our first trial at that, but now we have so many other things to offer. I think we're going to have to continue to evolve as an association to meet the needs of our members, but I don't think our members' needs are going away. Okay, thank you. It's really been a pleasure talking with you, and I appreciate your time, Karen. Do you have any other thoughts before we conclude our chat here? No, but it's been really great going sort of down the A in and A memory lane with you and looking back at the things that happened 25 years ago. I'm really amazed at the amount of work we accomplished in one year, and I know that every president since me has continued to have that challenge. It was a real privilege to serve a and all the years that I did. And to serve as president was really the top of my career in nephrology, but it wasn't the end of my career in nephrology. And I'm proud to say that I served, but it's so wonderful to see a and continue to be such a solid organization. And it, it really was fun to kind of go over these past memories with you. Thank you. Karen Warren Sims, past president of a and from 1993 to 1994. Thank you so much for your time. And more importantly, thanks for all you've done for a and Thank you. The American Nephrology Nurses Association's 50th Anniversary Podcast Series is brought to you by the Nephrology Nursing Journal, the official journal of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. This series is owned and produced by the American Nephrology Nurses Association, all rights reserved. No portion of this podcast may be used without written permission. For archived episodes of this podcast and to learn more about the American Nephrology Nurses Association, visit the association's website at annanurse.org. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, our hosting site Spreaker, and other various podcast delivery services. 